Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about moms. Moms. Okay, let's go. Moms is a viral illness. It is highly contagious and it is vaccination preventable with MMR, that is measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine. Mumps occurs worldwide, higher in late winter and early spring, more common in children and young adults, not in infants. Now very uncommon thanks to the availability of measles, mumps, rubella vaccine. Transmission. Mums is highly contagious. It is spread by droplets, fomites, and contours. Shedding of the virus will occur before the onset of the symptoms. The incubation period is between 12 to 25 days. It could be detected in a week after parotitis onset, but could be before the onset of parotitis as well. Still on transmission, there will be decreased level of the virus by day six to nine after parotitis onset. Outbreaks in the past were in schools dormitories. Though vaccination is helping to curtail the spread, but Winning immunity can lead to cases even in vaccinated individuals. Okay, when it comes to clinical features of mumps, it's variable. It could be asymptomatic in about 20%, particularly in adults, and could be no specific symptoms in some patients, and there may be no clinical evaluation. However, in many cases, there will be clear cut clinical features like fever, headache, myalgia, fatigue, anorexia, salivary gland swelling for about 10 days, earache with tenderness, that is parotitis, before parotid swelling, and of course, obvious parotid swelling. As a matter of fact, some uh, groups of people, I mean some ethnic groups in some parts of the world have their own local dialect names for months because it will be so obvious. Okay, complications. Let me start with mom's localities or mom's varieties. There are more possible complications. But I will draw more on mom's localities or mom's varieties. Okay, let's move on. When it comes to mom localities, that will be the most common complication in post pubertal males, and it's going to occur in about 30% of them. Okay, what are the clinical features of mom's localities? The symptoms of mom's localities will show up after 5 to 10 days after parotitis. And they are severe testicular pain, scrotal swelling, unilateral in 80% of cases. It's also called epididymal orchitis with testicular atrophy in about 30 to 50%. If it is bilateral, there is that likelihood of infertility, although this is uncommon. If you go to many literatures, you're going to find out that sterility is very rare. But that is not to say that it is completely impossible. There is a possibility of testicular cancer, but it is not fully linked. In mom ovaritis, however, 
This is going to occur in about 5% of postpubertal females. You could say that it is less compared to mom orchitis. There will be positive mumps with positive signs of symptoms of mumps with associated fever, nausea, and vomiting. Also with abdominal pain, mastitis, and probability of premature menopause. But there's no clear cause to relationship with female infertility. How do we make the diagnosis here? History of contact, and of course, signs and symptoms, particularly signs and symptoms of chitis in males, signs and symptoms of phoritis in females. And we have to do our thorough physical examination, checking the face and buccal cavity. When we check the buccal cavity, we'll be looking for stance dot, which will be erythematous and enlarged. After thorough history and physical examination, then we'll add to the lab. What are you going there to do? Yes, let's have complete blood count, white blood cells, and differentials. And of course, we might be dealing with leukopenia. Preliminary chain reaction could be done, and of course, we could ask it for IgM related to mumps. And with the presence of that, that will give us a clue that we're having acute mumps here. Lumbar puncture could be done for CSF analysis, and we might have a result of relative lymphocytosis in the phase of lycopene. And of course, when we assay the enzymes, amylase will be raised. What are the poss other possible complications? Meningitis, encephalitis, deafness, Glenn-Barr syndrome, facial palsy, and transverse myelitis. Other possible complications include arthritis, which will be infrequent, bronchitis, on account of which will assay the level of amylase and is going to be raised. Myocardial involvement will include probability of acid depression, myocarditis, or cardiomyopathy. What are the probable differential diagnoses of mums here? It could be parotitis, and that could be by viral causes like flu, rubella, parainfluenza virus, adenovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, herpes, and of course, human immunodeficiency virus could be secondary to bacteria parotitis, and in that case, we'll be dealing with a prolonged discharge. Other possible differential diagnoses include calcula in the salivary glands known as salivitiasis, salivary gland tumor, sojourn syndrome, which is a autoimmune condition, and of course, acoidosis, also an autoimmune condition. Treatment, well, mostly self-limiting situation. And if at all we're gonna treat, it's gonna be supportive treatment and not just treating symptomatically. Still on treatment, if the diagnosis of mom's arthritis has been made, then we can give our acetaminophen, that is law or paracetamol, depending on your jurisdiction, okay? You can give non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, give cold packs, and of course antibiotics for secondary bacteria infection prevention or treatment. Okay, if the diagnosis is mouse varieties with all the presented symptoms, then we refer to gynecologists appropriately. Prevention. Measles, mumps, rubella vaccine is out there. Please let your kids take them. Forget about this false notion that measles, mumps, rubella could actually now teach your child to autism. There are lots of controversies over that. Okay? 
but you could see it on our possible complications that may follow, including myocarditis, cardiomyopathy, pancreatitis, even affecting the brain, meningitis, encephalitis, and so on. Isolation of suspected or confirmed cases would be wise, and we have to cover our cough, sneezes, exosteria, just as we are doing now in the era of COVID-19. If outbreak in a school or community, we have to prevent contact with unimmunized members. And with that, I've come to the end of this presentation. Months is preventable. But if anyone should be infected with mumps, the probable complications could be devastating. So do everything to get Mrs. Mumps Bella vaccine and it should be fine. Although having the Mumps Mrs. Bella vaccine is not the guarantee that you will never have mumps, but at least you would have satisfied your own part of the process. And if you do that for your kids and eventually come down with mumps, at least you've played your role. And record is there that with the availability of mumps, Mrs. Rubella vaccine, the rate of mumps has dropped worldwide. Thanks for listening. Please remember to subscribe, remember to share. I appreciate it.